What type and how much of solids, organics, nutrients and pathogens are included in fecal sludge in your city? This is a very important question to ask for the selection of collection technologies and the design and operation of treatment plants. In this module, we will introduce you to relevant characterization parameters. Following this module, you will be able to explain the importance of characterization, select relevant characterization parameters, and choose existing resources for characterization. Characterization of sludge can be qualitative, for example, by monitoring the sludge color that is discharged at a treatment plant. A color that is different from brown or black, as shown in this video, could indicate an industrial contamination. Such qualitative characterization is important for treatment operation, but does not replace quantitative characterization that is always required for the design, operation and monitoring of treatment plants. Missing or unreliable information on characteristics commonly leads to poor performance or complete failure of collection and treatment services. Let's consider for example this settling thickening tank, one technology for solid-liquid separation that is discussed in a separate module. Among others, a settling thickening tank is designed based on the amount of solid that requires treatment. On the one hand, underestimating the solid's concentration in the design process will likely overload the technology during operation and result in poor effluent characteristics that can affect subsequent treatment technologies and ultimately the discharge concentrations. On the other hand, overestimating the solid concentrations will lead to the construction of tanks that are too big which wastes financial resources and also influences its operation. Quantitative sludge characterization requires laboratories with analysis equipment and technicians, as shown at the treatment plant here in Dhaka in Senegal. As these laboratories and their operation incurs costs, characterization parameters should be carefully selected to answer one or several specific questions. These questions could be, for example, what is an appropriate collection technology? What are design parameters for treatment technologies? Or does the effluent from a treatment plant meet legal discharge limits? To answer these questions, it is helpful to group characterization parameters that are relevant for collection and treatment. Parameters that are relevant for resource recovery, for example of compost, are discussed in another module. For the selection of sludge collection technologies, it is important to know whether the sludge can be pumped. Therefore, solid parameters such as total solids, total suspended solids, and viscosity are important. In addition, it is important to know the amount of solid waste as it can clog and damage collection equipment. Characterization parameters that are relevant for different treatment technologies can be grouped according to their treatment objectives. For technologies designed for solid-liquid separation, solid parameters such as total solids, also called TS, and total suspended solids are important. Total solids are for example important for the dimensioning of dry embeds, another solid liquid separation technology shown here at a fecal sludge treatment plant close to Bangalore in India. Other important parameters for solid liquid separation technologies include the sludge volume index, a metric to estimate solid and liquid separation of fecal sludge, the amount of solid waste, oil and grease, and grit and sand. Removal of grit and sand and solid waste is often the first treatment step following discharge as shown here at a treatment plant in Kampala in Uganda. For technologies designed for sludge stabilization, total volatile solids, also called TVS, the chemical oxygen demand, also called COD, and the biochemical oxygen demand, also called BOD, are important parameters. The BOND and COD is for example important for the design of waste stabilization ponds that can be used for treatment of effluents from solid liquid separation technologies such as settling thickening tanks or drying beds. The ratio of BOD and COD and TVS and TS can also be used as an indicator for the relative biodegradability of organics and fecal sludge that affects biological treatment processes. For technologies designed for nutrient management, ammonium, Nitrate, nitrite, and phosphate are important parameters. Pathogen inactivation is ultimately the most important objective in fecal sludge treatment. Instead of measuring individual pathogens, indicator organisms are used to provide a measure of pathogen concentrations, 
and inactivation during treatment. Examples of indicator organisms are viable helminth eggs and E. coli. Helminth eggs are commonly used as an indicator for pathogens in the solids. For example, in dried sludge or compost, as shown here in these pictures at a Ficasa treatment plant in San Jose in Costa Rica. In contrast, E. coli are important for the liquid fraction, for example, from settling thickening technologies, drying beds, or the effluent from a Ficasa treatment plant. Other important general characterization parameters include the pH, the temperature, and the electric conductivity. In reality, a combination of these parameters is selected for the design, operation, and monitoring of different treatment technologies and an entire treatment plant. This could be during research or to collect characteristics for treatment design. In this picture, one of my colleagues is collecting Ficasa samples for a characterization study in Kampala. Or during operation of a treatment plant, as for this treatment plant in Kampala, where samples may be collected the inflow, before and after treatment technologies, such as these settling thickening tanks and drying beds to assess their performance, or the effluent from treatment to assess whether the effluent characteristics meet discharge limits. You might be overwhelmed by the number of characterization parameters presented here. For implementation of characterization in your city, you can find more information on sample collection, preparation, protocols, and considerations for quality assurance and control in these standard reports that can be downloaded for free from our website. Standard operating procedures are also available from the website of the Pollution Research Group at the University of KwaZulu-Natal in Durban, South Africa. In this module, we introduce you to the characterization parameters that are important for collection and the design, operation and monitoring of treatment plants. These parameters are measures of solids, organics, nutrients and pathogens in fecal sludge. We hope that you explore the additional material provided and find them helpful for fecal sludge characterization in your city.